The year was 1938. One champion, one venue, a legendary bull and an epic battle that will change the destiny of the Spanish fighting bull forever. My name is Eddie Brochen. I'm a professional outdoorsman and wildlife manager. I've received a call from Daniel Saba, who has commissioned me to visit his ranch in central Mexico to conduct a wildlife survey. I specialize in wildlife management of white-tailed deer herds on large tracts of land in Indiana, Texas, and Mexico. So I assumed that this was the reason for my visit. They soon headed south for the border in anticipation of a routine land and wildlife evaluation. So he had thought. They made a quick stop at customs to declare their basic essentials. Tequila, whiskey. The sportsman and his crew were finally through the border and headed through the interior of Mexico. As we approached the checkpoint, I didn't want to draw any unnecessary attention, so I ordered the cameras to be put down. Put the cameras down, put the cameras down. This is good also. This is good. Yeah. Really good, actually. It makes me... Um, Proud to see them uh, working and uh, here with their presence, taking care of the area. The crew stopped at a local convenience store about an hour from the ranch, so they could stock up on some last-minute supplies. It all looks so tasty. And then they have my favorite tamarindos over here. Check these out. The only problem with these is that they're uh, it's too, too big, man. I mean, look at all that. I couldn't eat all that. I'd get sick. It's my favorite candy. Oh, but I need to find some smaller packages. Sabinas and Villaldama, which is the next uh, little town, they were both established by the Mexican conquistadors while they were trying to find um, mines to dig up uh, gold and uh, silver, especially okay, so silver. Gold and silver mines. Uh -huh, gold area. and silver mines. Um, so back in the late uh, 1700s, they discovered a big, big uh, um, area here in between the mountains, between the two towns, where they discovered a lot of silver. Um, so they started mining, mining it out, and uh, people from Many places started coming in because it was like a small boom, a mo oh, small rush, yeah, so silver mining rush, rush, mining yeah. rush. So people started coming in and there was actually a lot of cash flow, a lot of money. Uh, there was a, a, a nice economy in the area, the local economy. It was working pretty well. Mi nombre es Daniel Sada Dominguez. Yo soy productor agropecuario, soy el dueño de este rancho, aquí se conoce como Rancho El Cerrito. Antiguamente era una tierra destinada a la crianza de reses bravas y ahora pues somos productores agropecuarios eh, y estamos produciendo higos para mesa y para envasar. Criamos toros aquí eh, desde mi abuelo. En la época de 1920, él pidió su primera corrida de toros y nosotros, ya con el nombre del Cerrito, empezamos a lidiar desde el año de 1968. Afortunadamente, triunfamos en la mayoría de las plazas y hemos estado presentes en todo el territorio nacional. Now to his surprise upon arriving at the El Cerrito Ranch, he quickly realized that there would be much more to this visit than he expected. Much more. 
todavía me acuerdo cuando yo era niño aquí hay una leyenda muy bonita es la leyenda de el torón el torón era un animal enorme con unos cuernos gigantescos he soon found out that the El Cerrito Ranch was originally part of a much larger ranch called the Playa that was acquired through a Spanish land grant in the 1700s and that it eventually became a ganaderia for Spanish fighting bulls. After mining operations had closed, this ranch became a Spanish fighting bull breeding operation that helped satisfy the demand for fighting bulls in all of Mexico, South America, Spain, and Portugal he began to hear stories of a legendary fighting bull that was bred on this very ranch and sold into the Plaza de Toros in Monterrey. Ever since I was a child, I've been listening to, to a story and a legend about a bull called El Toron, but he was like the star of the bullfight. And not even before the picadors came in, the, the bull ring, boom, El Toron just he just caught the, the matador really, really badly. The next matador comes in and challenges him again, tries to uh, kill him. Unfortunately, the story repeated, he got bored again by El Toron. Picadors come in and there they are just waiting for the bull to charge them. But El Toron just came in so fast, he just caught the horse again. I mean, just like the other two matadors, finally, the third matador comes in, the bull ring. He was actually able to spear El Toron with his Spanish sword exactly, just exactly the way they are supposed to be killed. Sí, hay una leyenda aquí que es la leyenda del Toron. Es un toro que batallaban mucho los vaqueros para pescarlo, para verlo. Y fue creciendo y se fue quedando porque no podían con él. De repente lo metían al corral y se les escapaba, ¿verdad? Ese toro batallaron mucho. Un buen día lo metieron en un corral y por fin pudieron dejarlo encerrado toda la noche. Al siguiente día vinieron a llevárselos para que los lidiaran en la ciudad de Monterrey. Cuando se supo aquí que ya había muerto el torón, los vaqueros se pusieron muy tristes y e hicieron una fiesta para despedir al torón, al alma del torón. Y cuando hicieron esa fiesta, Fue cuando descuidaron el resto de los animales que estaban en un corral pegado al cerro. Y de ahí dice la leyenda que es de donde se escaparon sus descendientes que ahora habitan arriba de la montaña. Así que allá arriba está el hijo del torón. It wasn't long, and the sportsman was packed and ready for what would be one of his most exhilarating adventures of his career, a hike to 5,000 feet, where allegedly now lives the magnificent, legendary mountain bull. Morning, Danny. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you? How was, how was your sleep? Sleep was good. Sir. Yeah? Really good, yeah. Are you ready? Uh, a couple months worth of cardio there at the gym, I think I'm ready. It's gonna be a rough one, but it's totally worth it. Okay, well, let's hope we can find some bulls, huh? El Cerrito was muy antiguo. Este terreno fue de el abuelo. Se lo regaló a mi padre y luego mi padre me lo regaló a mí. Entonces ya me quedé yo de dueña. Y aquí formé mi ganadería. Y pues tengo muchos años de tenerlo porque me lo regalaron cuando yo tenía 13 años. So here we go, Eddie. This is it, we're finally getting close. I mean, it looks like we've been driving towards this mountain for an hour. <laughs> it's still <laughs> way over there. It's like you never get there, you know. Sí. 
it, Eddie. The rest of the way, we're gonna be on foot. Let's do it. So the sportsman headed up into the mountain in search of the majestic wild Spanish mountain bull, Toro Bravo. Oh, el cazador eh, es un hombre muy valiente. Ese hombre con solamente un arco y una flecha de madera viene para subir esa montaña para ir a cazar ese toro majestuoso, el hijo del torón ahí arriba. Pesa más de 600 kilos ese animal. Nos dimos cuenta de que se nos iban al cerro entonces porque buscábamos los números y no los encontrábamos muertos en ningún lado pues donde andan luego hubo quien viera que los toros subían al cerro se quedaban allá pero no podían bajar entonces muchos toros se fueron a la meseta del cerro y allá se quedaron y allá están allá hay, hay muchos unos ya se han muerto allá y hoy, pero como se fueron machos y hembras hay criadero de toros arriba. Allá nacen y allá se quedan. El torón had become some sort of like a, a, a spirit here at the property. So when this bull died, his bloodline basically won their freedom because back at the ranch, the vaqueros at the time basically sat around and told stories about the legend of El Torón and nobody worked. When this bull escaped, they actually returned to their place of origin. These bulls um, originally used to live in the mountains of Europe, between Spain, France, and Italy. Up high, they were called Euros. It was a tremendous test of their endurance and will to succeed, as the mountain itself posed the greatest challenge. Making it to the top would prove to be a difficult task. Well, Danny, we must be getting close, man. I'm seeing sign all over the place. I'm seeing tracks. And now I'm starting to see these rubs up against these trees here. That's right. That's right, Eddie. They would um, come up and right but again like a hog or something, right? Correct. That's right. Okay. Well, Danny, what, what is this place right here? Where, this is base camp or what? Yeah, this is actually base camp. Uh, this is one of the mining uh, tunnels that the min miners dug out back when they had their operations running. It's uh, going to be our best source of water up here in the mountain. Okay. Um, and uh, when the time is right, we can even find some peaches. You can see all these old peach trees and the fig okay. trees. Fig they were all planted here by the miners a hundred years ago. Nice. They're still living here from the water. Daddy. All right, well, let's, uh, I can take my backpack off and rest for a bit and let's grab some water. Here the adventurers must get their fill of water and prepare for the final climb to the summit, or pandero as it is called. Coldest, sweetest water around the place. <laughs> At this point, he needed to make it to the top just to prove that the bulls exist and have found a way to survive in this ecosystem. Are they successfully breeding? What is their main diet? Where do they get water? These were some of the questions that were running through his mind. Like you can see the tracks. I mean, there are Spanish bulls in these mountains. I mean, there's, there's sign and, and tracks all over the place. I want to spend the night in one of these old abandoned houses here that the miners left down. Packages of oysters, one thing of tuna left, two things of tuna, that's it. Mm -hmm. So, that makes it count. <laughs> <laughs> we, better, we better kill something tomorrow morning. I hope so. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> what sleep? <laughs> From here on out, the trail to the top consists of only trails used by the bulls. So the toughest climb was yet to come. Uh, more proof right here that the Spanish bull herds are indeed thriving right here and are wild. I actually um, took the skull and horns of this bull last year and he now decorates our main entrance to our home down at the ranch. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, he died here of natural causes just with age. Old age. Uh -huh. He uh, came in and tried to look this really nice area. He just laid down. He liked it. Yeah. Put him, himself to rest. Very nice. Yeah. Oh, The sportsmen had finally reached the summit. This is the place where large mountain bulls are said to roam. They use the plateau in between the peaks to cross from one side of the mountain to the other. After reaching the summit, Daniel had to say goodbye as he was running late for his cousin's wedding. After 20 minutes of looking for the bulls, the sportsman realized he had been passing right over the bulls the entire time. All it took was for one of them to finally move its head, exposing them against the background of the mountainside. At this moment, I realized what I was about to do and that was to challenge the bulls without getting killed in the process. How and why is between God and I. I didn't come all this way to back down now, and I was willing to risk my life just for the experience. The head-on standoff was long and strenuous and proved to be unsuccessful. The bulls are very smart, and after two hours of an intense stare-down, his body had begun to wear down, and he knew if he didn't head back soon for the safety of the base camp and water, he might not make it to fight another day. So he accepted defeat and headed back up to the plateau. Once he had arrived at the plateau, he realized that his cameraman and only survival partner was gone. He was nowhere to be found. He looked for him for two hours and eventually decided it was best to try and make it back to base camp before he ran out of water in daylight. We got up close and they were just these massive bulls. I mean, just huge, they have giant horns, um, just big black bulls like you see in the, uh, the Matador fights. I lost track of Eddie at some point, so I don't know. I don't know where, what happened to him and I, I just, I was wandering around and we kept bumping into these enormous bulls and I was trying to I didn't want to get run over or anything, so I, uh, so I ended up leaving, sort of left Eddie there. Uh, I didn't really know what happened to him, and I couldn't get a hold of him. Uh, I didn't have a phone or anything, so uh, I had to pack up my stuff. I, I waited for like two hours, and I packed up my stuff and went back down the mountain. The sportsman needed to hurry and secure a decent shelter for the evening. Not only would nightfall be upon him soon, but a massive cold front from the north was now headed in his direction.
sense the coming cold, so he gathered as much firewood as he could, in anticipation of the evening to come. The cold he wasn't afraid of, but he knew that this was wild bear and mountain lion country, so he made several sound traps for any would-be predators that might venture his way during the night. As far as food was concerned, he only had one can of smoked oysters left. He was dying to eat them, but was so afraid that the smell of the can lingering in the air might attract bears that he decided to do without. As much as he tried to sleep, that would not be an option, as he was on the defensive the entire night. Every sound, every bump in the night was amplified, seemed like more than 10 times. He tried to head back up to challenge the bulls one last time, but his weary body gave out. He realized the chase was over. If he did not head back down now, he might not have the stamina to make it back. After a good night's sleep, the sportsman headed out at daylight for an early scouting expedition. He had walked for several miles evaluating the status of his native whitetail species when he heard a strange noise. When he had closed the distance, he saw a dark object in the brush and approached with caution. And I got a rare glimpse of two wild Spanish mountain bulls interacting here in the wild at the base of the mountain. And this is very important to me because last year when I climbed the mountain here at El Cerrito Ranch, I had to go 5,000 feet up to find the bulls. And I found six giant toros, six huge bulls that look like uh, have bodies like a pit bull, all muscular with big horns and big knots on their necks, big balls on their necks. And the only thing was, is they were so far away, you couldn't tell. The, the, the video uh, just didn't do it justice because they were so far away, we didn't have the lenses to reach that far. So that's why I'm back to try to get better images. And what a start today to have uh, a young, wild Spanish mountain bull suckling from its mama right here at the base. And that proves to me that not only have they re-established up high in the mountains, but they've re-established at the base and are probably populating and utilizing this land and this environment all around the mountain. 
This is great news for me. It was an incredible start to the sportsman's second visit to the El Cerrito Ranch. He would now head back to the house for some breakfast. I would, I would feel more comfortable at the very end if you took this one with you. Okay. Okay. Um, just in case, uh, it's gonna help you make some good noise, or you can take a couple of shots. And try to. You know, I probably won't use it, but I'll take I know. it. It makes you feel better. <laughs> it makes me feel better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank no you. Problem. No problem. Hey, uh, I also have this uh, pro little propane stove, but I don't know if you're too loaded. You don't want to be too heavy. No, uh, that's okay. Because it's either this or leña. That's all right. The other side. Perfect. I think that's a wise decision. Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate it. Uh, sure. We'll get to see some of this. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. The weather's clearing up. There's going to be some sun tomorrow. So there's going to be movement up there for sure. Awesome. Awesome. This time, he would hit it alone, as he learned that these bulls see and hear everything out of the ordinary, and knew he was coming the last time he hiked this mountain. The closer he got to them, the higher they went, and when he finally made it to the top, they had actually descended down the other side. Ese cazador, para ir a matar ese toro, solamente con un arco y una flecha de madera, verdaderamente tiene que estar loco. The sportsman had learned a valuable lesson in the bull's awareness of their environment. But was his decision to challenge Bull Mountain on his own the right choice? He was off to a late start and needed to make base camp before nightfall or he will have to sleep out in whatever elements the mountain throws at him. The sportsman knew he was getting close to base camp as he had finally reached the clouds. Somewhere on the other side of this valley is the shelter he needs for his evening's rest.
would not light a fire to keep warm this night, for fear it would alarm the bulls and keep him from getting the images he needed. The following morning, the sportsman awoke to the bugles of mature bulls. He knew his sacrifice of sleep without the heat of a fire had paid off. He stopped at the final base camp to fill up his canteen. This is the last place to get water on the mountain, so he must be careful to ration it well. He was surprised to see that someone had been sleeping in his bed. This was the bed he had made last year when he was here. It was obvious that the bulls frequent this base camp for this water resource. At last, he spots three mature bulls on the horizon of the plateau. The largest black one was in the lead, but had crossed over just out of sight, leaving the two subdominant bulls in range of his camera. They were much younger, but still very impressive to look at. One was a ghostly white and gray color mix, and one a solid black. Both were made up of solid muscle and appeared to be in great health, both sporting an impressive set of horns. They had the very distinctive white bases with curled black tips that the sportsman was looking for. After reaching the summit, he spotted two of the bulls off in the distance and decided he would try to get close enough to challenge one of them with his bow and arrow. The terrain looked much easier to cross than it actually was. Everything is so much further and more difficult to walk across than it appears. It did not take long for the bulls to notice they were being followed and quickly left the area. It was only a matter of minutes before they had disappeared into the cover of the mountain. Even though his stalk was unsuccessful, this journey has been, as he now had visual proof that these bulls are successfully living and breeding here. He had witnessed bulls of various ages, which is a good indicator that the herd is well established. Now all he needed was to see some females. Upon returning from his attempted stalk on the bulls, he noticed a large black bull on the horizon. Finally, he was able to get some images of a large mature black bull. The sun was now at its highest for the day, and heat was bearing down on the tired sportsman, so he sought out shelter from the scorching heat in one of the abandoned mines. Aquí cuando mi abuelo vivía y era más joven, corría el año de 1900, eh, firmó un contrato con una compañía minera que se llamó Compañía Minera Fundidora de Monterrey. Esa compañía estuvo explotando el mineral de fierro desde el año de 1900 en ese pico de Candela y en la base del Cerro del Carrizal, de la Sierra del Carrizal. Y ellos tenían muchos tiros, tiene más de 30 millas de tiros subterráneos eh, donde estuvieron extrayendo el mineral de fierro porque eh, ellos tenían una espuela de ferrocarril, del ferrocarril que viaja de Laredo a Monterrey. Y aquí cargaban todo ese mineral para ir a dar a Monterrey a una gran fundición, que fue la primera en toda América Latina. Ahí se empezó a trabajar con este, este mineral de este cerro, forjó las primeras vigas para construir la ciudad de Monterrey. La primera maquinaria industrial, que luego hizo que Monterrey se convirtiera en la capital industrial del país. After a short nap, he decided to explore some of the caverns in the mines. 
but I was down inside this mine shaft, just killing some time. And uh, last time I was here, I found a really nice quartz crystal. So I came down here again, and to my surprise, I found another one. <laughs> a really nice one, perfect shape. But I, while I was down here, I found a tomb of one of the bulls. See here in, in, in these mountain regions, these bulls don't have any uh, predators, any natural predators of any kind. So they usually only die of old age. And I found a shelter for the miners that mined this mountain. And I found uh, the remains of a bull inside of the, that shelter and right here beneath me here. So uh, just goes to show you that they seek out uh, uh, places of solitude when they go to lay their head to rest for that final time. Later that evening, the sportsman headed out of the mine in search of more bulls. He spotted a medium-sized black bull off in the distance and then decided to head back down the mountain. The experience of being here is just tremendous. Uh, a memory that will last a lifetime. There's still some daylight, so hopefully I'll be able to, to get an image, some photographs of some up close. But uh, if I don't, I'm, I'm happy with the way this trip's turned out. That's it, so I'll have to come back again some other time. As he was leaving, he encountered a small group of female bulls grazing in the valley in front of him. This is exactly what he was looking for, a visual of healthy females with their offspring. This really was the missing link. These bulls are thriving in this environment. The former mining operations have created water sources that would otherwise not be available and is the main reason for them being able to survive here. This is clearly a unique ecosystem found nowhere else in the world. Here, in the heart of the Sierra Madres, the Toro Bravo is king of the mountain. After making it back to the lower level base camp, the sportsman built a fire to keep warm and settled in for the night. A much needed rest was in order, so he could regain his strength before descending down the mountain in the morning. I've seen it happen time and time again. Um, they'll lay down, if you get them under stress, they'll lay down and close their eyes. And I think even sometimes they hold their breath to keep from moving. And uh, they'll wait till you drop your guard and walk into that zone, man. It doesn't matter if it's five feet or 10 feet, buddy. When, when you get in their zone, when they think they can get you, they're back up and on you just like that.
We're preparing again. This is our third and final attempt to get good images of the bolts. Our food for the next couple of days, some tuna, some ham, sardines, potatoes with gravy, macaroni and cheese, and some teriyaki chicken. The sportsman was preparing for yet another treacherous climb, and this time it would be the most challenging of all. At this point in time, he was still interested in challenging a bull if given the opportunity, so a few practice shots were in order. He had become somewhat addicted to spending time on Bull Mountain, and his desire to hunt a bull was slowly fading. Secretly, he had become addicted to the serenity of the environment and living, even if only briefly, alongside the majestic Spanish mountain bull to be sufficient. He was becoming a crazed fighting bull fan, like the people running the streets of Pamplona, Spain. He too was running with the bulls, an act these bulls just can't seem to get away from. The sportsman had never been here this time of year, and he could not resist the sight of ripe oranges on the tree. Little did he know, the energy from these little oranges would play a key role in his survival over the next few days. One fourth the way, right? One fourth the way. Mm hmm. <coughs> I think we just stay here for at least 20 minutes, man. Are those eagles way up there? I can't even see them. You see, there's it's no, three of them. No, those are buzzards. They're so uh, buzzards, yeah, buzzards. Now, this is why you don't want to be a man short, right here. Right. And worse is that, you know, it's the middle almost summertime and the desert sun beating down i mean we can't just push it and push it and push it we're not going to make it <clears throat> i'm telling you right now how many yeah. degrees do you think we're at right now oh it's well over 100. yeah well over 100. That, that sun is it's really raining down oh man can you see i'm, I'm already all red i know because of it so let's you know play it safe man slow and steady is going to win the race here if we push it too hard we're not even going to make it I'd rather camp outside somewhere else at one of the, you know, lower level base camps and survive the night than I would for one of us to get sick and get in trouble. We're already a man down, so. Well, this is our third time up here. And the first time we came, it was the middle of the winter. Second time we came was a little bit late winter. And now we're here in early spring. And each time has presented its own challenges. You know, the mountain itself is obviously the biggest challenge because you think you're going to go all the way up there and see the bulls and grab that perfect shot or get a chance to shoot the ball or whatever it is. You can't worry about that. The first thing you have to worry about is whether or not you're gonna even get to base camp before dark. Because <laughs> if not, you're gonna be sleeping on these rocks somewhere in the middle of the night. I mean, that's the truth of it, you know? But I was so hungry, I had to break down. I've got about 11 ounces of tuna here, so I think that's gonna give me enough energy, enough protein to make it up to the top, um, hopefully before dark. But if not, we're gonna have to find some shelter up against some rocks or who knows what we're gonna do. But plenty of water too because I mean we're only halfway up the mountain we're about half we've already spent half our water we're already breaking into food rations 
We're exhausted. It's well over 100 degrees right now. And I just think that that's the biggest challenge, right? The biggest challenge is just the mountain itself. El pico de Candela va eh, hasta una altura de los 1,400 metros sobre el nivel del mar, hasta los 1,900 metros en la parte más alta. Sus, sus, sus hombros están en los 1,400 y el pico está en los 1,900 metros. Aquí donde estamos, estamos en la cota de los 400 metros. Así que hay muchos ecosistemas diferentes conforme uno va avanzando, la vegetación cambia y los animales que uno puede observar también cambian. So there they were, coming around a bend in the mountain trail. And off in the distance, they spot a very large black bull and two subdominant younger bulls. Finally, the sportsman has another chance to challenge a mature bull. At this point, I have become so fascinated with these bulls that I put down my bow and decided to shoot them with a camera instead. There's no doubt in my mind that these bulls on this mountain and in this region are becoming the arrows of their ancestry through a process of natural selection, genetic breeding, dominant bulls breeding with dominant females for nearly a hundred years now has all but weeded out the less dominant uh, genes of the wild uh, Spanish mountain bull. It's extremely important, now more than ever, that we protect these animals from extinction. Now that these animals have reestablished for nearly 100 years now, they're becoming that wild game animal again. And it's important that we ask the Mexican government to step up to the plate and classify them as a wild game species belonging to the Republic of Mexico. Just like the American and European bison, the water buffalo, and the African Cape buffalo. That way the angadi can step in and regulate the conservation of these animals. The landowners can then conduct wildlife surveys, you know, using helicopters or drones, whatever it is necessary, to count the numbers of animals in the herds on their own specific lands just like the professional outfitters do in Africa for the Cape Buffalo. The same diligence that is taken in the management of the Cape Buffalo needs to be taken and applied here with the wild Spanish mountain bull. For the first time in three trips, we have not made base camp. So it looks like we're gonna have to uh, make camp right here somewhere. Up along the rocks, I think we're gonna have to not make camp. But I saw a huge bull, and then I just saw another huge bull across the valley. Several that we got on film earlier today, so I'm very excited. So I don't think that we have to uh, go much further to, to actually find the bulls. They're feeding, and there's a lot of water in this draw here. So I think we'll spend the night here, and uh, hope we can wake up in the morning to see some some, some bulls up close.
They had finally arrived at the lower level base camp. This is where a cold stream of water flows from deep within the mountain. This is also where a unique ecosystem has evolved. The miners must have planted several types of fruit trees here as they do not exist anywhere else on the mountain. There are fig trees, orange trees, pears, and different types of ferns. This was the base camp we were supposed to be at last night, but you know, we're way behind with all the gear we have right now. And uh, it is so hot right now. I bet it's probably 40 degrees Celsius or better. Yeah. Maybe 100 degrees Fahrenheit or higher right now. So there's no way we're gonna make it back up, you know, the rest of the, the way to the top. Um, we call the, the top, the, where the, bull, the bulls uh, cross, we call it the bandero. And uh, there's just no way. So we're gonna stay right here until the sun starts to go down a little bit, the little by little work our way up there and hopefully get a shot at one of those really big bulls. I want you to see what they look like. They're very impressive, majestic creatures, mountain bulls. And I know that this is where they belong. When you take a look at them, you know that they're at home. It's very impressive. But this landscape here is very diverse and each season um, has its own set of challenges. And right now, the challenge is the heat. Um, a few months back when I was here, the challenge was the cold. So, and the ice and the rain. So, uh, with any luck, we'll get up there today. We'll make camp and hopefully get some images of the big bulls. that's coming out. We're running low on water today, Eddie, right here. We need to do our best because this, from here on, there's no more water. Well, we take what we'll get.
she's not. She has, she's a mother The sportsman spotted an old female bull off in the distance. She was very old. She had a sagging hide and had shrunken, uneven horns. He was really amazed to see that she was still of breeding age, as he noticed she was nursing a calf. After an afternoon of bull searching, they headed back into the shelter of the mines. They had some time to kill, so a bit of prospecting was in order to see what kinds of little treasures they could find. They indeed had found an enormous pocket of smoky quartz and were determined to collect a few specimens. I try to walk the right road Yes, I try to believe Like a bad religion You gotta hold on Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm gonna get this one, man. I'm under your spell A sweet falling Nightfall had arrived, and the mine gave the adventurers a great place to rest. Although the temperature is quite cool inside, it is constant and warmer than the nighttime ambient temperatures outside of the mine. After a good night's sleep, they woke to a very dense fog. It was so thick you could cut it with a knife. Since they could no longer film, they decided to give up the chase and head back down the mountain. My crew had learned a valuable lesson to not wear shorts this time of year. Their legs were on fire due to the poisonous, stinging plants. Thank you. 
This is the only place in the world where these bulls exist in the wild today. They're a mountain bull, a fighting bull, have always been a fighting bull, and will continue to fight. At least this time, it will be in their own arena. I was the first, but now there will be many who will come and challenge the spirit of the bull.